so this is 4.8 inverse variation. And uh, last time we talked about direct variation. This is inverse variation. And I think I want to get through this by thinking about um, time and speed. Yeah, for a fixed distance. So time and speed. And by speed, I'll call it rate. So time and rate and distance. So for example, like um, if I'm going 60 miles per hour and I drive for two hours times two, that'd be 120 uh, miles, two hours. So one, thing's, uh, one thing I know is distance times rate, if I multiply them together, is, is equal to time. Uh, no, that's not true. One thing I know is distance equals rate times time. That's what I did, the rate times the time. So as I uh, think about that, let me, what if I wanted to isolate T, get T all alone? What I could do is I could divide both sides by the rate. So I know that distance divided by rate equals time. And so let's keep the, uh, let's keep the distance fixed. Let's keep this distance 120 miles. So we're going to go 120 miles. And what I want to look at is different, um, different rates and times. So I could start to make a little table, rate and time. And we already have uh, one case here. If, if, I, if I go 60 miles per hour, miles per hour, time is hours. And this is to go 120 miles. Um, it would take me two hours to do it. Like I, I did that up here. So how about if I wanted to go 120 miles, but I could only go 30, uh, 30 miles per hour? Well, I know that um, I know that the distance divided by the rate is the time. So if I go 120 miles divided by 30 miles per hour, that gives me four. That would take me four hours. So 30. Uh, would take me four hours. Or how about if I could go, uh, if I had to go 20? 120 miles at 20 miles per hour. Same idea. 120 divided by 20, that's going to take me six hours to go there. 26. So there's this relationship going on. Um, and in this one, my distance is fixed. So my distance, oops, sorry, is 120. So I'm going 120 divided by the rate gives me the time. Um, 10 miles per hour, 120 divided by 10 is 12. Or even if I were to go 90 miles per hour, uh, 120 divided by 90. Now I might know that, I might just do it on my, my calculator, whatever, 120 divided by 90. Um, 1.3 repeating, so one and a third or um, four thirds. So notice the relationship that's going on here between rate and time. If I go 120 divided by rate, I get time. Or another thing that you can notice is if I just multiply these together, rate times time, I always get the same value, which is that 120. Right? You can see if I multiply these together, I get 120. So I also know that uh, rate times time is 120. In this case, rate and time are in an inverse variation. Notice what, as one of them goes down, the other goes up. And they always multiply to the same amount. Or if you go some constant divided by one of them, you get the other one. In this case, the constant is 120. So we had this 120 divided by rate equals time. Uh, that 120 is the constant, so we'll call it k. And I had rate and time. I could call this x and y. So if I have k divided by x, I get y. That is, that is my model for an inverse relationship. Notice if I multiply both sides uh, by x here, x times y, you can say they also always multiply to the same amount. And this k is called the constant of proportionality. And then x and y are variables. So let's go ahead. I'm going to erase, and then we will um, think about some other examples like this. I think I'll just erase the whole thing, and I'll rewrite my... 
uh, y equals k over x, or x times y equals k for inverse. So let's say that uh, y varies inversely um, as x. Sometimes that word will be with. Sometimes we say y varies inversely as x. So when we say this varies inversely, that means it's this model. That means y is some number divided by x, or x times y is always the same thing. So I'm going to give you a little more information. When y is 100, x is 2. So let's do a couple of things with this. So first off, let's find that, that constant variation, that k. And uh, I know if I multiply these numbers together, they give me it. So 100 times 2 is, is 200. So k is 200. So that would just be finding the constant. I can also write an equation for this relationship now. y equals... Well, k is 200, 200 divided by x. Notice if I take that 2 and plug it in, 200 divided by 2 is 100. That matches this model. So then I can say, well, if I have the same kind of uh, relationship, what would, what would y equal when x equals 8? Well, now that I've written that model for it, I already have that model. That's pretty easy for me to do. 200 uh, divided by 8. I think that's 50. So that would be 50. Let me show you another example like this. Same thing again, y varies inversely with or as x. I'm going to say when y is 6, x is 3. Uh, what would y be when x is 12? So let's start with our model. We know that x times y, if they vary inversely, always have to multiply the same thing. So x times y. 6 times 3 is 18. So that's my k value. So I know my model is y equals 18 divided by x. So now let me go ahead and solve this. Uh, y, what I want to know what y is when x is 12. So let me plug in the 12. y equals 18. Whoops, sorry. 18. That should be an 18 over 12. And then, you know, I, could, I either can reduce that in my head, I can do it on my calculator, whatever. Basically, get 3 halves or 1.5. Because 3 halves times 12 is also 18. So when things vary inversely, uh, they always multiply to a constant amount. All right, uh, give those assignment problems a try. Message me if you have any questions.